Hello again, this is CK Panel 7, and you guessed it, we are back for another commentary. This time, Disney vs. Non-Disney Villains, round, Part 2, Round 11, both Part 1 and Part 2. Um, this is a really good round, and in, and from what I'm seeing here, this is probably the longest round by far that Man Wu and Sen Fu Man has made. If you put both parts together, 27 minutes, 46 seconds long. Almost a half hour long. Interesting. Just wanted to point that out. So yeah, let's go and get this thing started. Hold on a second, let me um, change the volume a little. And I guess I'll do. It's about time. Zerg and the Decepticons are at each other's throats. You try getting hold of a digital computer. Excuses, excuses. So yeah, we basically have Shredder and Crane, the 80s version of Shredder in this case, this voiced by Manwu and Sentu and Man. If he beat you, shouldn't that make him more deserving of being the real Shredder? Oh, I see how it is. You know, if you love that fake Shredder so much, why don't you go work for him? I would, but he's not around anymore. Not around? He's dead? The one calling himself Macbeth set fire to his HQ and cut his head clean off. It was a glorious sight. This is absolutely perfect. With that fake Shredder dead, we can take his empire. Then the world will know the wrath of the one true Shredder. You might have a good idea, Marlots. What the devil? Someone's coming. I better be on my way. Yeah, sorry if I didn't have much to say there. I was just listening to you guys, you know, doing your voices. Alright, here we go to our first fight. Hamsterville, Leroy, and Zerg versus Crane. Uh, this was a good fight. It's about time that we had Hamsterville fight. Because, I mean, we introduced him in round in the round 6 epilogue, and it's already round 11, so yeah, it kind of took a while. I guess I will have to agree with History Buff, though. The Leo and Stitch sequels weren't really as good as the movies. But, I mean, hey, to me, they're a lot better than the Stitch anime series they did. Which I already ranted on that in my Disney Heroes vs. Villains commentary. I mean, I like to hear what history buffs to say about the Stitch anime. And here we go to, um, Cold Stone and Thalog versus, um, uh, Dalon Wan. So Savarius releases two experiments out to deal with one of the acolytes, in this case, Dalon Wan. Uh, not much really to say on this fight. It's a good fight, just nothing really sticks out that much. Just sort of watching at the moment. Oh, perhaps you should be picked upon by something your own size. Oh yes, yeah, the most cliche of all um lines. Why don't you pick on something your own size? And probably it pretty much works a lot of times. Especially for the most awesome of villains. Okay, this part kind of confused me of what was happening exactly. We must do this again sometime. Yeah, I seriously did not know what just happened. So, anyway, uh, sorry if I didn't have much to say on that fight. Just nothing really witty to say. Now we go to Abyss Maw versus Admiral Zhao. And do nothing. Most evil, vile, and cruel villain in the land has spoken. 
Yeah, do not fail, Osmo. Yeah, that's a, that's a very likable thing to say to him. I mean, he's not the worst Disney villain, but still. I will say, though, I am surprised. I mean, even though Abismal lost, he did last longer than, like, five seconds, just like with Jupiter Smarts. Especially right here. I, mean, I never would have thought of that, using him just moving the sword around to make it look like he's actually stabbing him. But yeah, he's still lost. And he failed to get the lamp. Here we have Coyote versus uh, Storm Shadow. So Coyote is now all fixed up in his robot form and is with the pack, and as well as Drago shows up. But well, apparently he's still trying to make sure that his father, Shendu, does not return. It's not that I don't have a lot to say on these rounds. I mean, this is a good round. This is a lot of these fights I just don't have that much to say about. Maybe it's because I just don't have much of a preference to these villains, because the majority of these TV shows I never really watched as a kid. Alright, here we go. Fat Cat versus Carface. And I gotta say, I was surprised to see... Well, okay, I wasn't really surprised that Carface would return because we saw him in the Part 2 trailer. But still, it's about time that he returned. And it's about time we got the Criminal Empire going. And it's about time we saw Fat Cat do something, because we introduced him in Round in the round 8 epilogue. I mean, I did love to be the Rescue Rangers when I was a kid, so this brings up quite a bit of nostalgia for me. Now here we have a really epic fight. Odin, the Dark Dragon, and Hecate versus mom -Ra. Wait, okay, now I I'm kind of wondering, how do you pronounce her name? Is it Hecate or Hecate? Because I, I hear people pronounce it either way. I can never figure out how you pronounce her name. I mean, it's been so long since I've watched the Hercules TV series, so I don't remember that much from her. Don't deceive my enemies. My true form is Wow, he seriously got a serious upgrade. That's what we're watching at the moment. It's such an epic fight. But like I said, I never watched Thundercat, so I don't know too much about Mumra. And I never really realized he added another form. Now all three of the acolytes attack at once. And here we have Fang versus Karai. So Demona, who's still in her human form, sends Fang out to deal with Karai, I suppose. I don't know. I can't remember what the description said. And cry me to the mind bender. And I find it funny, I think I can't remember who, but I hear a few people on the forum sort of ship cry and mind bender together. Which I guess I can kinda of see that. From looking we're doing a little research, Karai, I understand she's kind of an anti-hero as well. Like, 
There, like, a lot of people ship her with one of the turtles, I think. I don't know. Like I said, I never watched the show. And Fang just escapes. You know, I'll be honest, I think Karai, she is probably one of the... has to be up there in the really attractive uh, female animated villains, if you know what I mean. And here we go to the live-action realm. Jadis versus Saruman and Lurks. Now this is a really epic fight. Even though I never watched Lord of the Rings, this fight was really epic. And it doesn't make sense getting these two villains to fight. They are somewhat similar. They're both, like, evil wizards. Well, or something like that. Well, Jadis is a witch, but you know what I mean. And it's also about time we had Jadis get a fight. You know, that's another thing about Jadis using in this tournament, is that she... I mean, she only really appears in the first Chronicles of Narnia movie. I mean, she does appear in the second and third one, but... The thing is, the third one is not Disney. Disney did not make a Voyage of the Dawn Treader. So I'm kind of thinking, if you were going to use footage from that, it would... I, oh, sorry, my thing does this every now and then. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. I was just saying, though, Jadis, I guess you could say she's both a Disney and a non-Disney villain, but mostly a Disney villain, though, considering that she was in two Narnia movies that were both Disney and one Narnia movie that's not Disney, so, yeah. Just wanted to point that little thing out. I mean, I don't know if you'll be using footage from those other films, because she's barely in them, but you know what I mean. Right. Yay, Carface is back! Yay, Catawall is back! Yay, Liquid is back! Wait, Liquid's back? I mean, Carface and Catawall, I was... I was excited to see, but Liquid? I did not see that coming. Does that mean Aunt Fig will, will be back eventually? Because that'd be very nice, because it's been a while since we got any... You know, the return of any non-Disney movie villains. Because we like what History of Us said. I mean, I love what we, that we have TV villains, but we use them so much that we barely get to see any movie villains. Especially ones that we had in the pre- in, the, in part one. Got to have money. <laughs> what do I more than anything in the world? And Negadeth bursts in to force an alliance with Fat Cat. Which I guess I can see that happening. The real fight begins. And Draco now teams up with the Pack, who are now upgraded. as well as Coyote. Meanwhile, Saruman gets his army ready. You know, I definitely can't wait. When we get to the, you know, the round that's the ultimate melee, what's it gonna look like in the live-action realm? I'm just saying. It'll be awesome. Yeah, Saruman and Lorx team up with these other two Lord of the Ring villains. Gee, that guy needs a facial done or something. Alright, now we go to part two of round 11. So we start off with, um, Eris asking Dis Discord to get some more allies. Two citizens of Equestria. King Sombra and Queen Chrysalis, which I'm guessing Hisubo's not gonna like this, that, you know, how much he hates My Little Pony. And I just love Zekul Khan's reaction right there. He At first he's unamused, but then he realizes that they're pretty interesting opponents. So after some thing, and Hades get, gets out Echidna's children. And he 
gonna go to our first fight. Gaston and Akina's children versus, um, Queen Crystal and King Sombra. Which, as funny as this sounds, and as weird as it sounds, this is actually probably my, um, favorite fight in this entire round. I know that sounds funny considering that it's My Little Pony villains, but I'm serious. This round was so epic. And let's get ready to rumble! Because, I mean, it takes place in a Colosseum for one thing. So, I mean, yeah. And the music goes perfectly well. I just recently found out that this is, like, Discord instrumental music, which makes perfect sense. It's due to its irony. And it fits so well. You know, I also love all the characters that are in this. Like, you have, um, they, like, in the arena itself, on one side, you have all of Akinna's children, which, let's see if I can guess their names. Um, this one right here is, um, Chimera, which, I definitely, I am familiar with Chimera. It was basically that lion-goat-snake combo monster. Then you, that yeti-like beast was Jigrarius, I think. Then there's, um, there's the Nemean, oh, sorry, the Nemean lion, there's a Cyclops, and then there's, um, that other one, Ladon, I think was his name. So yeah, so basically you have all of the Kinnis children fighting off Chrysalis and Sombra in the tournament. On the Disney side in the stadium, you have Hades, Echidna, Gaston, the Weird Sisters, the Goron Sisters, and Dr. Vassilier all rooting for the children. Whereas on the non-Disney side, you have Zekel Khan, and Eris, and Aku, and Discord. Like right here, he's just sitting in the arena eating popcorn. I mean, if, if, the, if someone was doing a fan fiction of just this round, I could just so see that kind of scenario happening. I'm just saying. You know, funny thing I just recently looked up, that the actress who voices Queen Chrysalis also voices, um, Eva Lynn from, uh, He-Man. I find interesting. And as for King Sombra, okay, I'm sorry if I keep pausing this, I just keep bringing stuff up. Um, I, un I understand that Sombra is, like, the newest My Little Pony villain. He appears in, like, the beginning of Season 3. At least that's what JC says on the board. Today. And we get Gaston, who is now the Amok Mara, I think that's what it's called, from the Aladdin TV series. What and I will say, am I the only one that thinks Gaston is much better as a monster than his actual human self? Because I think so. You know, another thing, um, I'm beginning to see that, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, when, when Hades said, you, you know, when Hades said, got them, and that's when I begin to realize, you know, these Disney villains, they seriously mean business, because earlier we had Otis Maul said, hurt them, and now we have Hades says, get them. It's like, now they, they are sick and tired of taking all this crap from the non-Disney villains, now they're really meaning business. I just love it. I understand you were going to have Nightmare Moon in this fight, but I guess you couldn't, um, fit her in. Or you couldn't get the footage to her. I'm assuming we'll see her eventually, due to a lot of people seem to be fans of her. Now, did he kill Queen Christmas or just send her away? Like, we'll never see her again in the war. And the score goes to the Disney villain. And are we going to see a rivalry between Cecilia and Tekla Khan? I'm just saying it'll be interesting. By the way, see... This, this, um, interaction between this, like, I, okay, I don't know if Facilia, was he looking at Zekel Khan or Discord? I'm assuming it's Zekel Khan. But, I don't know, it's just when you, when you went from Facilia to Discord, it just reminded me of that fight I made since we met. You remember, the Facilia versus Discord fight. I did make that as a fight, and sadly you won't be able to include it, because I thought it was a really good fight. Set. Set. Match. Match. Oh yeah, Hades means business now. And here we go to John Castaway versus Amon. Uh, again, not much really to say on this fight, other than it was well edited. 
It's good to see Oman finally getting some action in this series. Even though we just introduced him in round 10. Like I said, I never watched The Legend of Korra, but I am happy for the people who are fans of Amon, like History Buff. As for Castaway, I understand he's like the leader of the Quarrymen, which are those men from Gargoyles that History Buff really does not like, due to the fact that they remind him too much of realistic people and all, like Nazis and stuff like that. And now we go to Shere Khan versus Kainer. And I gotta say, it is about time we saw Shere Khan get another fight. Because before this, his only fight was way back in round 8 in part 1 where he fought Claude Bandis, and that was a really brutal fight. Again, you're using footage from the Jungle Book 2. Nothing really wrong with that. I guess maybe it's because he doesn't really have too much fight footage in the first Jungle Book movie. Now, is Kainer supposed to be like part jackal or something like that? You know. After watching these fights, I, I, I realized Momo has got some really weird minions. Cause you have like this like part a jackal no. character, you have a, he has like a part gorilla, he has a part like frog, he has a part um another gorilla with a weird saber tooth, and Mirage pops the heck out of nowhere. And here we have Gantu vs Megatron, the rematch. Because we saw them fight in the homemade submission round, so Gantu encounters Megatron again. But this time he's got more powerful than their last encounter. You know, the thing about Gantu is that they can never get his size thing right in Lilo and Stitch. Because in the different Lilo and Stitch sequels and in the TV series, his size always varies. Like, in the first movie, he's like 20 feet tall, and then in the sequels, he's like 10 to 15 feet tall, or something like that. I don't know. They can never make up their mind on how big he really is. Just sort of watching at the moment. And Kent Mansley sees this, which this I did not see coming. Apparently, Kent Mansley's looking for more villains to add to his prison. Because so far, let's see, he has Jasper Horace, he has McLeach, he has John Silver, and now he has Gantu. You know, I can't help but think, are we going to eventually see, like, a prison break? You know, have the villains try to break out of Kent Mansley's prison? I'm just saying, that would be epic and awesome if you could do that, somehow. And now we get Senor Senor Jr. versus, um, Vlad Flashman. So you have Queen Loss and Vlad to, I guess, get these monkey cheeky heads or something like that? I don't know. Again, just sort of watching this at the moment. And here we go to the 40 Thieves versus the Dark Hand. Basically, the forces of Salute versus the forces of Valmont. Now, this was a pretty epic fight right here. 
Valmont can get the last eight talismans. Punch right in the kisser. We got the 40 Thieves doing something, you know what I mean? By the way, that reminds me, and I know this is kind of off topic at the moment, but about Mum Ra. Um, does he have Scar Hyenas, or are the Hyenas just, you know, free on their own? Like, are we gonna see the Hyenas again? Because you can get them to fight someone. Like, you can use footage in the Lion King 1 and half. they have some footage in there you can use, I'm just saying. And Valmont now has all the talismans. This is not good. And here we go to the Battle of Peru, which is basically the forces of Yzma versus the forces of Azula. So they already captured Ingla, and now they're going after Peru. And it's about time we have, like, Shawnee's faction doing something, like, we finally get to see the Hunts clan doing something. But I'm just saying, where's, like, the rest of their crew? I mean, I understand Saluk and the 40 Thieves are, you know, they're still, you know, dealing with Valmont and them. But, like, where's Mosenrath and I am a Ghoul and them? I mean, like, shouldn't they be helping them? Oh, by the way, I love this bit right here with the roller coaster. it's really creative. And Megavolt is there. No. <laughs> and guess the Megavolt just retreats, and so does Yzma and Kronk. And the Hans clan. And finally we have the Sanders sisters versus Jareth. And Cal is here. You know, Cal of our son. And I guess he's the forbidden child that Bath Morda and Jareth are looking for. And I also love what you did here, where instead of just adding just random music, you just kept the song from Hocus Pocus in this fight. I was wondering when you were eventually going to do something like that. You know, as I said, I've never seen Labyrinth, so I don't know that much about it. But I gotta say, some of Jareth's minions look a lot like Muppets. I'm serious, look at them! Some of them look like Muppets! So yeah, that was pretty entertaining. Now we go to the epilogue, where Sean Yu sends Yzma, Mosenrath, and Ima Ghoul to find one more sorcerer. Zerg now has Krang as a hostage. At Cora's mansion, Destro meets a woman named D Dominique, or something like that, but who really turns out to be De Demona. Well, if you want something done right. Yeah. 
Love Destro's reaction there. And Krull and Dr. Claw meet up. <laughs> Count Olaf is not pleased, and Krull and Claw seem to think that he's not that useful. Okay, now this part of the epilogue really, really surprised me. Like, I don't know how it's even gonna work. I mean, are you sure this is a good idea? I mean, seriously. I mean, okay, so basically, yeah, Mach turns 14 in his human form. Which is, how's that gonna work? Because 14 is only a human form in, like, a flashback in the Enchanted Christmas. So I'm just kind of wondering, what do you have in mind there? Whatever it is, I am excited for it. And Mach being his insane self, like always. And Mad Madam Mim is back! And the Sorcerer Society is born! Yzma, I am a ghoul, Madam Mim, and Mosenrath. And Destro introduces Cobra to Dominique, who to Anton Severus looks surprisingly familiar. I decided to leave the fleet of air alone. With my idea to burn everything to the ground, I decided to be by your side! Apparently some father or sister reaction, Jafar is a bit, you know, himself. And Shengu has risen! Back from his stony prison! Hey, that rhymes! Risen prison. Oh dear, this is not gonna be good. So yeah, that was, uh... Round 11 of Part 2 of Disney vs. Non-Disney Bones. Yeah, I'm really sorry if I did not have too much to say on that round. It was a really good round, just... The majority of those fights just didn't really have that much witty things to say on it. They were just really good. How long was this? Okay, it was about, you know, 32 minutes long. So yeah, this is CK Prime 7, and I definitely can't wait for round 12, so I will see you all later.